Hi, this is Dennis with Cybercraft. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Exploit Database, a really great tool for gathering, for finding information about different exploits that are out there. The Exploit Database is community driven. It's submitted by different members of the community. You can view by author here on the right side, and we can take a look and see the different authors that have com uh, contributed to this database. Now, it's a really nice tool, and it's defaulted to sort by date, so we see the most recent entry was the 15th of November, but you see there are consistent entries throughout the year. We have, I'll go through each of the columns here, you have the date, you have the download file, we can download either a text file or a Python file, uh, whatever type of file that's relevant to the command or to the exploit. We have the title, we have the type of exploit it is, you, most of these are gonna be web application, vulnerabilities and the platform you know for this type of web application it's a PHP vulnerability for example some of these are Python some of these are Java some of these are hardware and then the author of course you see the author submitting to the exploit database so we can take a look at different exploit databases or I mean different exploits that we see here uh, for example here we go here's a race condition for solar wind so we see the solar winds platform of course has had quite a few vulnerabilities in its time. We see here the uh, exploit database shows us that we have a race condition. A race condition is when two inputs that rely on like a certain order of events are trying to input something into a database or do a sequence of commands. But if that sequence or that timing, the order is not enforced by the application, then you have an event where two different inputs are trying to maybe manipulate the same variable or to uh, store into a database and the timing gets off and that, that can cause that can reveal additional information so let's just take a look this looks like some uh, code here and if we see here looks like an exploit that has something to do with the session cookies I'm not gonna dig then too deep to this but it looks like here we have usernames and passwords so it's a way to gather usernames and passwords probably by exploiting the session cookies so clearly that'd be pretty damaging if you use that but you can take a look and each of these is going to have a corresponding CVE number so we can take a look at the CVE number it goes right to the, the National Vulnerability Database and we see the different metrics here 8.1 base score high on the CVSS, Common Vulnerability Scoring System, and we have advisories directly from SolarWinds. Always nice to look at the CVE number because you get advisories from SolarWinds, uh, from the vendor, and we see that right here. Affected by the race condition. Doesn't really tell us how much, what to do to solve that. Now some of these are going to show you how to fix these vulnerabilities, so it can be helpful if you're running a specific vulnerability, or you're, I mean you're running a specific web application, Sorry, Freudian slip there. If you're running a specific web application, then it's a good idea maybe to check this database for your web application. Now, we can see lots of different web applications here. All of these, Carbon Forum, Bolter Blue, Dot Clear, any type, Monstra. I'm not sure what a lot of these are, but we see them here in the database itself. So really nice system you can search. You know, So we can search here let's see let's just search for windows and see what we find now we see some windows vulnerabilities just by the keyword that's going to search keyword in all the columns so we see some here in the platform we see some here uh, in the title itself and let's see we have a rce checker remote code execution windows defender mitigation bypass okay so this is a way to bypass Windows Defender with a Trojan, I guess. Product Windows Defender, Mitigation Bypass. Oh, and this one's a little more detailed. So we have typically Windows Defenders detects and protects Trojan Win32 or PowerLinks type execution that leverages the run DL32.exe. Okay, so it's gonna, normally Windows Defender detects Trojans that use run DL32.exe. That used to be a common way in which Trojans would run. Uh, so this person has created an exploit or figured out a way to do this, and he voluntarily presented his exploit to the exploit database to help the cybersecurity community. 
Okay, so this person is probably a, a white hack hacker, an ethical hacker, or perhaps a gray hack hacker. Oh, look, there's even a YouTube video where we can see. Maybe we can look at that and take a look at this. Okay, there's some music, but we can see that an, a video about how to do this, it's this certain exploit. So good detail there. So you find some really nice detail. And since it's community driven, it's not governed by a lot of different rules. There's many different formats. There's no real standard format. So if we download that, we have a text file here that explains everything that he just explained on the he or she explained in the uh, in the listing right there. So that's great. Really helpful to find some additional exploits or some additional resources. And you should incorporate this periodically, I'd say maybe once a quarter, into your uh, threat intelligence gathering. Just take a look at the exploit database. Keep abreast with it. It'll probably take you about five minutes to identify any new vulnerabilities and read through them. If you get into the habit of doing that every three months, you can really get a sense for, oh, is there anything on the exploit database that I can use or can, that can help me harden my systems, harden my network. So just want to bring this to your attention. If you haven't been using it, it's a great thing to check and uh, might be something you would consider putting into your toolkit in the future. So exploit database. And we have more than just the exploit database itself. So here's the exploit. We also have some additional tabs on the left. We have a hacking database for Google. We have different papers here. So you can, now these are a little older, but there are some, there's some good information here. We have some code itself, again, a little older. We can do a more advanced search here by CVE number. So if you're, maybe you're investigating a certain CVE, you can find an, a corresponding exploit, maybe get some more information and search by the platform. And there's lots of different platforms here in the dropdown. So these platforms here are listed. And you can see there's tons of platforms. Windows, Python, Solaris, Linux. Search by the port number. If you're trying to harden a certain port, that could be helpful. And you can also submit if you like. If you want to contribute, you can submit here as well. So it's a great way to go about finding more exploits, finding information about how to secure your environment. And I like the fact that it's a community database. So you find some entries that are, you may not see in other databases or commercially driven threat intelligence fees. You'll find a little bit of flair, I'd say with the, the submissions and some additional alternative formats. Like you see that YouTube video where someone's showing the exploit, you probably wouldn't find that if you're looking through like a CrowdStrike threat intelligence feed, you know, it's a really unique tool. So I do recommend taking a look at it and, and maybe incorporating it into your threat intelligence habits on a continuous basis. But I hope this video is helpful to introduce this feed to you, this exploit database, and I hope you do take advantage of it. If you do have any questions about it or how to use it, just uh, let me know and I'll be able to answer those questions for you. But I hope this was helpful for you. Have a great day.